Now let's talk about the file settings. This is where you determine the final file type of the images that you're exporting. The default is JPEG, and it's probably going to be the one that you will use the most. It's the one that I use the most, in fact. One of the settings that I always like to make sure that I have set is the quality set to 100. It does make the file a little bit larger, but I want my images to look their best. And so a quality set to 100 is going to make that happen. If you are concerned with file size, you can check this limit file size option and then set the kilobytes to whatever size you need them to be. You also have a color space setting. For sharing online, sRGB will be a good option, but if you have another profile that you'd like to use, you can choose this here as well. Next on the list is PSD. Now it's important to note that if you export as a PSD, or if you export a PSD file as a PSD, it's not going to result in a layered PSD document. This is going to flatten your file, so just keep that in mind. Color space is the same as the JPEG settings, but we also have this bit depth over here on the right. Now the best way to think of this is an 8-bit file is going to have less data than a 16-bit file. It's probably not going to be very noticeable just by looking at it on your computer, but if you know you're going to make a lot of changes to this photo or somebody's going to really push the pixels around a lot, then you may want to go with 16-bit. 16-bit will be a larger file size than 8-bit, so just keep that in mind. There's also a TIFF setting. It's very similar to the PSD. The only difference is here is that you have a compression option. None just adds no compression, so it's going to be a larger file, and a zip compression is just going to compress it a little bit. You may lose a little bit of quality. That kind of just depends on the image. You also have the option to save transparency. So if you had a file in Lightroom that had transparency, then this would be the setting that you'd want to check. If you were just working on regular raw photos, then that's probably not going to be uh, an issue, so you don't have to worry about that setting. There's also an option to export as a DNG. This is mostly for raw files if you wanted to export a copy of it as a DNG. And if you pair this with the image sizing that I'll discuss in the next video, you can actually create smaller DNG files. I will oftentimes use the DNG and pair it with a smaller file size to allow people to follow along in tutorials without giving the full size raw photo. And last on the list, we have original. This just exports the original photos. This is a great option if you want to share a large group of layered documents, for example, and you don't want to flatten those files when you export them.